Well, that didn't take long at all. Linux on the ROG Xbox Ally X. In fact, on launch day of this device, the team over at Bazite had this up and running, and I've got it installed here. Uh, it's pretty amazing. I mean, I've been seeing some really good performance. And of course, first and foremost, this is meant to be a Windows device. Microsoft, Xbox, and Asus have done a lot of work to get our Windows really optimized for this, and the work is coming along really well. I might not be running Linux on this full time once uh, everything gets ironed out over there in Windows 11 with the full screen experience for handhelds. But right now, it's totally possible to install a SteamOS-like operating system on this device and kind of get all of the bells and whistles that you'd see on something like the Steam Deck. But we've got full TDP and GPU control, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and you know everything that really needs to work here is working very well. And I'll tell you the truth, as soon as I was done with my first video on this device, by the way, if you're interested in checking that out, I'll leave a link in the description. I tried to install official SteamOS, but unfortunately it just won't boot yet. So we do need to wait a little while, but I'm sure we will get support for this device. I just plugged into my game capture to give you a closer look at everything. And like I mentioned, Bazai has been running amazingly on the ROG Xbox Ally X. Day one, you could get this up and running, uh, albeit I did have to go into the testing branch of Bazai to get the controller working. And it was a little later during the day. But still, I mean, this was up and running day one when this thing launched, so that's pretty amazing. They're really quick and efficient over there at Bazai. With this setup, I mean, we've got access to everything we do on the Steam Deck. If we press our Armory Crate button, it's going to bring up our quick menu. From here, we've got a performance overlay. I'm going to bring it down just a bit so we can see everything. And I've got this plugged into an external monitor with my game capture, so up to 120, same thing as the screen. Uh, disable frame limiter. HDR is available outside of the built-in screen. We can allow tearing, half-rate shading, and we've even got TDP control from here. But what I like to use is known as handheld daemon. It comes pre-installed with Bazai. If I press my Xbox button and I believe it's Y, yeah, we can bring up the quick menu for this. So our TDP mode, silent mode is 13, performance is 17, turbo is 35, and we've got a custom here. So from four watts, all the way up to, I believe, 35. And there is a little bit of a boost that we can disable. So I think it does go up to around 37 with that boost enabled. I'm actually going to leave this off because when I'm doing my testing, we'll test it, you know, specific TDP levels here. Custom fan curve can be set. RGB, and I'm having trouble with RGB right now, and it could be my fault. I did install an earlier version of Bazai on this, so I might have messed something up. I did update through the testing channel. But if I go back, it may work. I'm not exactly sure. Either way, I know it will in the future. And down here, we've got controller emulation. And if I press Y while well, I'm in this menu, we've got access to a lot more here. So again, that TDP mode, TDP boost, energy standby mode, disabled or enabled. I'm going to leave it disabled here. CPU settings. You can go to manual and change our EPP from low balance to high. CPU boost can be totally disabled. And a custom scheduler, I'm not sure if this is gonna work perfectly with the Z2 Extreme yet, so I'm gonna leave this disabled. And you can also set the GPU frequency, max limit, you can set a range from here, you can go fixed if you wanted to. I'm gonna leave it at auto. And the battery charge limit can also be set. RGB, again, having a little issue with that right now. Controller, got general, updates, bug reports, shortcuts, and settings here. Again, I did go to the updates, and you can see I'm on testing right now. But yeah, this is pretty awesome. And to give you a look, we'll head into our settings, system. So we're on Bazite 42, and you can see we've got that AMD Ryzen AI Z2 Extreme, up to five gigahertz, eight cores, 16 threads, We've got 24 gigs of system memory, and uh, you can see we've got 16 for system and 8 for the iGPU. I probably should go into the BIOS and take this up to 12. I might do that before we get into testing, so keep that in mind. So yeah, this is pretty awesome, and now it's time to get into some game testing. I'm going to be testing out some AAA games at decent TDPs. I mean, like from 15 up to 25, we might even do 35 if something doesn't work correctly. But then we'll move into some indie gaming and see what kind of battery life we can get. Let's go ahead and jump into, let's do Cyberpunk 2077. 
First thing I wanted to do with this game was see how it stacked up against the Steam Deck at a 15 watt TDP. Up in the top left hand corner, you can see we're at a 15 watt TDP from Handheld Daemon. We've got it set right there, so static 15, no extra boost. Steam Deck preset, which does take FSR to balanced, 800p. Exactly how it's going to run on the Steam Deck, but we've got an unlocked frame rate instead of locked at 30. I know for a fact, I've tested it many times on the channel, the Steam Deck averages around 42 to 43 FPS with these same exact settings. And remember, the Steam Deck can only do up to a 15 watt TDP. I can tell you right now that at 15 watts on the Z2 Extreme AI in the ROG Xbox Ally X, hey, this is running hey. much better than it does over there on the Steam Deck for sure. The Xbox Ally X has a 16 by 9 aspect ratio display instead of 16 by 10. So in all actuality, in order to fill the screen up, we'd be at 720p, just a bit lower. Wouldn't make much of a difference, but this is running really well at a 15 watt TDP on this chipset but we can get a lot more out of this. So what I've done now is just take it up to a 25 watt TDP, Steam Deck preset, 1080p, and it looks like we're getting so close to hitting that 60 mark. And I'm sure when there's lots of explosions on screen, it would dip a bit further. But there's something else that we can do here with Cyberpunk 2077, and that's add a little bit of FSR frame gen. So now with that enabled, 1080 Steam Deck preset, still at a 25 watt TDP, we're over 80 FPS on average. And yeah, it is generating fake frames, but I think it's totally acceptable to use frame generation on a low powered APU like this that we have in these handhelds. Every little bit that helps out, I mean, really does make a difference. Next game I wanted to test here was Spider-Man 2, and I'm actually really impressed. This is one of those games that does put a hurtin' on most iGPUs out there. I'm at a 17 watt TDP. We're at low settings with FSR frame gen, but I am at 1080p, and we're well over 60 FPS with it. We've got some generated frames going on, but yeah, I mean, with this one on basically all iGPUs out there, I usually enable frame gen anyway. But given that this is running so well at a 17 watt TDP, it's pretty impressive. Checking out The Witcher 3, 1080 medium with FSR set to balance, 20 watt TDP. When you boot this up on the Steam Deck, it's gonna use dynamic resolution scale and that FPS is set to 60. So it's gonna scale that image down as much as possible to get up to that 60 FPS mark. I've got it disabled here and I'm just kind of using some force scaling with FSR set to balance. So I did have to take the TDP up a bit to run this at 1080, but it's really playable. I also wanted to test a fighting game, so I have Mortal Kombat 1 here at 1080 medium with FSR set to balance. Great performance. I mean, we get a couple dips here and there, but if that FPS counter wasn't up on screen, I wouldn't even notice it. Here's Doom the Dark Ages at 1080 using the handheld preset, FSR set to balance, and we're at a 35 watt TDP. This one is just a really hard game to run on basically anything, and at 1080 we had to take it up to uh, turbo mode, so we've got that 35 watts rolling out here, but it's not bad at all, and I'm not using frame gen right now. Going into this, even though we're in turbo mode, I figured we may have to use frame gen, but it doesn't look like we need it. I also wanted to do a little bit of low wattage indie gaming to kind of get an idea about battery life on this with these easier to run games. So I went with Silk Song 720p. I'm in quiet mode. And of course, with Bazite here, we could fully adjust that TDP and take it down as low as possible. But quiet mode on this system is actually working really well with these indie games. If you take a look at our performance monitor, this is total battery draw. And right now we're only at 8.2 watts. And going down to an easier to run 2D indie game, we'll drop it even further by about a watt, so 7.2 watts. But I wanted to see battery draw with some AAA gaming, so I tested at 17 watts and 25, Cyberpunk 2077, and it looks like we're seeing around the same kind of draw from that battery that we were in Windows, but it's still early for both of these operating systems, and I know more optimizations are coming. The ROG Xbox Ally X also has an 80 watt hour battery. And with my testing, I had the screen brightness at 50%, refresh rate set at 60 Hertz. Averaging out indie and 2D gaming around eight watts total draw, about eight hours. AAA gaming and a 17 watt TDP, drawing a little over 24 watts, so around two hours and 30 minutes. 
And at a 25 watt TDP, it's drawn a little over 30 watts in total. So around two hours of runtime out of this. And that's not bad at all for a handheld gaming device like we have here. So yeah, day one or launch day for the ROG Xbox Ally X, having Linux up and running on it like this is pretty impressive. Still a few things that need to be worked out here and there, and as soon as the devs get their hands on more of these devices, they'll be able to really kind of tweak and tune everything. But it's totally possible to go ahead and install it right now. I'm going to be keeping an eye out over on Valve's website for official SteamOS support. Once that hits, I will be making a video on that. But yeah, I've got a couple more videos on the way with the ROG Xbox Ally X. So stay tuned to the channel. It'd be pretty cool if you could hit that like button or think about subscribing so you know when I post the next one. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.